Welcome back to another scorching episode of I Love You Shave Me. I'm Matt Bissarsic, and with me as always is... Douglas Smite. We're going to get started today on an exciting episode all about the single edge razor. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. We're going to be breaking down all the ways a single edge razor ruled the world for generations to come. What do you got? Uh, you covered it all. That's right, folks. <laughs> we'll see you next time. What do you got in your cup? <laughs> I guess I can act. Like you. Yeah, see? <laughs> So. What the hell just happened, folks? But we are back, and we are going to be looking at all things gem today. That's right. That's right. We're going to get started with the original razor company to ever come on the scene with the idea of disposability or making it easier, so to speak. But before we do, let's do our after sheep of the day. Did I say after sheep? Four. Actually, just one. But it's called four, folks. And this is a classic vintage aftershave. So much so, you probably never heard of it. It's got classic country club scent. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? This is classic stuff. It smells like classic oh, man aftershave. It's got classic just pouring out of it, pouring out of it. Oh, so classic. Woo! Yeah, I gotta put this on too. This is like. It is. Who knows nice. what's in it, but. Uh, uh, it is brighter. I always like to use these. It's classic, like convenience store aftershave, like Aqua Velva Afta. or Afta. It smells like Afta. Or even earlier stuff too, like I mean, it's just or bar. You know, it smells like the stuff they were using in barbershops. I'm not saying barbershop scent, but the, the cheap gallons stuff, of cheap stuff they were. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Whenever I go to the barbershop, they're like, "You want aftershave?" And it's always the same. Give me that cheap stuff. Yeah, Pinot sure. Club, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can't get enough of it. And they're always blown away when you know what exactly what they used. Like, oh, you just used Clubman, didn't you? Oh, you know what this is? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a classic. Classic barbershop. But four, folks. This is really, it's before and after shave lotion, which tells me that this came out after uh, electric razors. Oh, yeah. Because it's typically this type of toner you would use the before you'd use the electric razor. Or they would offer it as before or after. For super freshness that cools and soothes for hours. And hours. We'll see if it lasts half an hour for this episode. Um, yeah, by New York. Very cool. Okay. I mean, I smell lavender. I smell oak moss. I smell just a whole bunch of manliness in this. This is really, it's a classic aftershave scent. It's a cla like, This is what your dad or grandfather would be wearing for. And that said, folks, I thought I'd also show you this quick little find. And I can't take credit for this. The desert shaver, uh, our friend Leonard Ibarra, came up with this, or found this rather. This is called Chin Golf. And the way he came upon this, he was at some restaurant that uses like old school advertising in their bathrooms or whatnot, posters. Not like Cracker Barrel, it was something else though. And he saw an ad for Chin Golf. And so the week he, start, he started digging around for it and found these cards. This actually came, so it's early 1900s. And what you would do is just see how many passes your shave would take. So this is a copy of the original. Uh, scorecard that came that you could s send away for from this ad. Uh, what I went and did was recreated it. I created a new version, a blank uh, uh, one that I will put online as a PDF that you can download and play your own game of chin golf. The link will be below. In um, in the uh, did you know any about this? Nope. Okay, so this is new to Matt too, but I'm putting this down below Four. in the description. <laughs> but what do you think about this, real quick? What are your thoughts? On I this? think if you're doing this, you have too much time on your hands. I think it's really cool though. Um, I don't count the strokes, I count the quality. Exactly, but this is funny. I mean like, because we tend to, we do stroke a lot. Yeah, especially if you're a multi-pass. Yeah, like, I mean we all say like, oh I do three passes, I'm on a four pass shaver. But how but many strokes? what about strokes? the touch-ups afterwards too? Yeah. So if, let's see how many strokes so you can get are you a, counting, a BDS shave with. Are you counting a stroke like one or is like? What's the length of the stroke? Yeah. I, I don't know. You know. So yeah, I'd love to hear comments on this below. And again, I'll have a, a link to the PDF in the descriptions below. Print it up, guys. And let's like, you know, compare notes. We'll see if we can have a competition in the future, maybe. Speaking of competition. Thank you, Leonard. In 1875, 
the world as we know it changed. And it changed yeah, how? We, we wouldn't be here we right now. We wouldn't be here. Well, the two brothers. Two brothers, folks. Camphy brothers. Came of, on the scene. Out of New York. Out of money. But big on idea. <laughs> yeah. Came up with the first safety razor. Yeah. Their idea was the hoe handle. Thundercats! Anyways, this is really, I mean, it's something else. It's actually a no-brainer. I mean, if, for any of you creatives, I'm, I'm oh, hoeing. that type of hoe. Yes. Oh, okay. You're in you your know, garden, you're tending to your little Because we hoe like this, the garden's over here. Yeah. Could be a raised bed. Anyways, uh, this is where we see, you know, they must have been looking at a straight razor and just thinking, they were. Well, how can we... They were. If you look at one of these blades... It's a cross-section, or not cross-section, it's more of a cut-up. Cut-up. It's just a, a segment, if you will, of a, a safety, a straight razor. Yeah, that's it. So they took this idea and, you know, people are holding traditional... And they ran with it. <laughs> no. People are using traditional straight razors, so they just said, okay, well, how can we just simply instead load the blade onto the handle and then have it be perpendicular to our face instead of trying to be parallel with your face? That way you have a lot more finesse and control because holding a straight razor is not, it's not easy. Um, it no, takes a lot not. of practice, a, little, a lot of you know, finesse with your fingers, and you can nick yourself. And you know, I know that Gillette was in a rail, r railroad car when he thought of a disposable um, blade, but this idea, again, this is 25, 29 years before Gillette was, was Camphy. Um, and it changed the world because now all the straight razors, uh, people out there who maybe were going to the barber shop to get a, a shave or if they try to own their own, they could at least have a lot more uh, control with it. Now, this, that being said, you still had to upkeep these. Um, they required just as much work yes. as, a, as a regular straight razor. They had to be sharpened on, a, uh, on stones. They had to be stropped on little miniature leather strops. So they didn't get rid of the maintenance factor. They just made it easier to hold. To shave with. You know, it was, yeah. was idiot-proof to a certain extent in that regard. And I must say that the concept, though, of a safety razor came out 105 years earlier, 1770, by a French, well, razor maker or something named Jacques. Jean-Jacques something French. But, uh... Not Cousteau. Not, not Cousteau. Regardless. Do you know what this part's for? That is a dog whistle. No? <laughs> John Locke would be proud. No, this is, uh... Keeps the handle together. False. That is the <laughs> stropper. So oh, no kidding. Yeah, you're going to put that in here, and this is actually how you're going to hold on to the blade to perform. Oh, so you use it like a straight razor. Which I'm failing. I'm probably going to slip my finger open. Or oh, scrape the hell out of that. Or <laughs> scrape the hell out of it. Well, no, it's, so, yeah. it's supposed to go in here. You guys get the picture. It, it loads into this. If I can just... Yep, nope. <laughs> but... Um, that is how you would do all the maintenance And then on you it. would strop it as you would a straight. So, okay, so you're still doing the same action. Right. So, uh, now let's fast forward the clock. It wasn't until about, what, 28 years later? 23 years later? 23. 23 years later, in 1898, when... Jerry. Jerry Reichardt left uh, Camphy after many years of well, faithful Well, we should mention certitude. that Camphy became Star. That they created the Star Razor. Right. The That's Star true. Razor. That's what this is. So from there, yeah, 23 years later, Jerry... 1898. Jerry left the company. That's a long time to be with anybody. And he wasn't the founder. He was just a really kind of trivial, or not trivial, um, key yeah. uh, key employee. Yeah. He left and he made Gem, uh, its own company. Started Gem. Yeah, yeah, and that actually quickly outpaced what the original Campy was doing. And it was really heavily based on this design, which I think he had a lot to do with anyways. Yes. And yeah, and it did. It became more popular than Star. Right. So uh, a couple years later, the actual invention of the of the single edge blade that's disposable, more or less. 118 years ago, 1900. Yeah, 1900. This guy came out. In fact, I have. Well, the only thing different. The was spine. The well, no, it's the hole. Oh, the hole too. Yeah. The hole, and I think those divots on the side. But I have one with me, and it's in one of these cases. But it's really interesting. Lies. Lies. Filthy lies. But yeah, the, the single edge blades have been around, and they, I, I think, some people, do you think these are compatible? I think I've heard some people say they can actually put these into these razors. You can actually load that in. Oh, I don't in. know. I've heard people say they can put double edge razors. See, this is it. Yeah. So as you can see, the spine's still there, but it's just a solid piece of uh, 
and the, doesn't the have doesn't side. have the little notches on either side. Yeah, it doesn't have the notches. Doesn't so. have the hole. So other than that, though, this but design that, has not changed for a hundred years. That hole is years. used on razors like this, right. like the clock the from the forties. Yeah. This actually needs that hole to, to load to hold it in place. Right. Um, but I was just demonstrating. You can also. You guys got that. Mm. You, uh, you can also load them into the original ladder catchers. Have you shaved with it? I have not, but I I don't imagine it being that big of a deal. That is interesting. If you've done this, folks, yeah. we want to hear about it below. If you put this a, is the first time I'm hearing this. Yeah. I've heard the double edge in some of these. Well, this makes a little more, I think, more sense, more Much thicker, more sense. and actually has a little bit of an angle that we give to it. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, this, the, the kind of the, the story keeps on going. Uh, Nineteen oh six, Ever Ready and Gem have a merger. Yeah. Nineteen oh six. Nineteen nineteen. You want to jump to that? Yeah. Nineteen nineteen. This new merger now becomes the American Safety Razor Company. It's true. ASR. Not to be confused with AM AMSR. Are we doing your head to toe examination today? Excellent. Well, I'm ready if you are. And they've been for the longest, up until 2011. They were, I mean, that's, that was a... They, yeah, the Philip Morris grabbed them in 1960, so they were bought out by Philip Morris. Um, but yeah, not, not until 2011. They applied for bankruptcy, but then they were scooped up by... Energizer. Yeah. And spun off on their own division that's now called Edgewell. Um, but bottom line is that... Uh, Today, the brand is, is, is kind of still intact because the Gem brand is still being used. The PAL brand is used. PAL was 1953. Yeah, 1953 is when they acquired PAL. Acquired PAL, yep. Um, and they are still using Persona. That's the big one everyone knows, the name Persona. And that's the only blade still made in this country, yeah. being the United States. Yeah. A lot of the grocery of store uh, brands will actually be private label from Persona, mm -hmm. American Safety Razor Company. Um, but yeah, they're still using these names, and of course, Persona's known for a lot of double-edged blades. Yes. Um, but very, very interesting period. You know, a lot, a lot of people get focused on Gillette. They think about all the, the double-edged razors, but single-edged, there's so many cool models. They really are. Uh, I mean, a lot of the earlier models, you can see the head design is relatively the same. It's the 1912 yeah. model. However, with the Junior, the Junior, I mean, look at that. You can see how similar they are. It's a little bit... Sh different geometry down here, but the lather catcher is relatively the same. Uh, you see the little blade guards. Those are the protect you from the corners of the blades. Those are relatively the same. So that design this really has, handle, hasn't changed. Yeah, I love this handle. Uh, the Bakelite, as Matt mentioned. Also, another thing, I brought an auto strop with me just to demonstrate another type of single edge, but more to show you the handle. If you have an auto strop and you like this handle better than, say, this junior handle, they fit. They have the same threading there. Mm. That's one thing different about these razors is um, that they're not standard size. They're not anymore anyways. At the time they were the standard size. But yeah, so you can mix and match these handles. Well, and it's also the thread comes out on this versus going in. Yeah, there's that too. Yeah. So it's a different design. It's, But one of my favorites is the junior. Do you, have you ever tried one of these? Yeah, they're awesome. I love it. I love the handle. I love everything about this razor. I think it's just, it's just awesome looking. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, what other models? So we have, uh, like, the, most of these are variations of the 1912 or yeah. Domansky well, style. Well, I, you know, I brought a few different selections. I got some gems here. So you can see the gem... Uh, it's a featherweight, I think. Yeah, the push button. Or no, G-bar. I think it's a G-bar. Yeah. It's We're, got the little logo the, on the side. You got to understand, folks. Yes. Matt and I, we aren't G. gem collectors. <laughs> it's got the G. That's the G-bar. Yes. So that's the G-Bar. This is also the Gem 1912. Yes. This is... A 1912 variation. The only other major ones are going to be these Micromatics. No, but I also brought some older ones too, so... Let's see, so we got the Ever Ready right here. And if you notice the way it's loaded differently, the blade rests in there, and the cat flips over. Right. And then we have this one, the American Safety Razor uh, Co. Yeah, ASR. Yeah. Model as well. Also a very interesting cap. Also, I mean, look at that. Look at the lather catcher on that. Pretty insane. It really is. It's more like the Comfy right. model than the 1912, I think. And then we have some other models here as well. Um, Another variation from 1912. And again, uh, this one is closer to the American... Oh, actually, it is. It's the same one. Right. I had two of them. So I got a case for this one as well. But I'm wondering if it's the proper case 
I don't know. I am this not is, a gem collector, so. If you are, we're not, I mean, I do have a, these are mine. <laughs> but I, a lot of these, I, they came in bundles and whatnot. I didn't realize I had this many, folks, because it's not my focus. Uh, I do love single edge, but it's not part of my, it's not my intentional collection. This right. one is really just a welcome accent that came to be. Um, I only started looking at them more and more um, when I was designing my own, which is this one right here. This is our Starling Razor. It's a three-piece design, but and it needs to be cleaned. But that's when I really started looking at the angle because unlike a DE blade, these are very interesting razors because unlike a DE blade, a, DE, a double-edged blade relies on the shape of the caps to give you the feel of the, the blade. Whereas in the single edge, it's the blade itself. All the You can't bend that blade. So now you're, all you have to work with to make it different is the angle. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's a whole different feel. Uh, a lot of people, especially with stiffer whiskers or thicker beards, prefer these. They're closer to a straight razor too. And honestly, if you're looking to eventually pick up a straight razor, people are always asking, like, should I get a Chevette before I jump a straight razor? I say get one of these first, because this is the exact angle you want when using a straight razor. Yeah. Thoughts on that? I would agree. Even I... the feel, it's very close. I mean, it's a stiffer blade. Stiff blade, good, great for people that have ingrown hairs, or like you said, wiry or coarse beards. Yeah. Um, another kind of Cadillac model that you're gonna see a lot of, especially at antique stores, if you're out hunting, is gonna be the Micromatics. And they, these are the base the butterfly uh, versions. Love them. Yeah, really cool, um, beautiful pieces. And they have several variations. They have ones called like the clog proof like this. It's gonna be the solid guard. Then they have just the regular micromatic that's gonna be open comb. They have, I think, just two or three variations. Well, and the plate. And the bullet and tip. And the bullet tip. Let's not forget the bullet tip. And, but and then there's a the plating too with these. Some, yeah. is some doesn't have any plating. It's just brass, straight up brass. Those were gold. Oh, were they gold? They were gold. I did not know that. The gold would rub off. But yeah, most of them are chrome plated like this original one over here. You can see this is chrome. And this one we actually redid in our shop. That's nickel. So you can see the variation oh, in yeah. color. Nickel's going to be more of a smoky gray. And chrome's going to be more of a kind of a whitish blue. That's chrome as well. And the interesting thing about this is the springs. These springs are like 80 years old, folks. And they still... They have a snap. Still, they, have a, they still have a little zing in them. I mean, like, nothing lasts that long anymore. So... I gotta get you know take my hat off really for for Jim for what you're doing because I'm bald. No, just sweaty. Oh, sweaty and bald. It's Phoenix people. Um, <laughs> but yeah, deal with it. I mean, there's a lot that can be said. A lot can't be said about, uh, about, about, <laughs> about airplane sing mode. <laughs> about single edge razors. Um, hopefully, you guys have had an opportunity to use one. Good. Airplane mode. Good lord. <laughs> He's going to take this. Yep, sorry guys. <laughs> this is, this <laughs> yeah, funny we walked away. <laughs> no, that wouldn't be funny. So, I think there's an interesting point about kind of the... Oh, what about how they were paralleling or mirroring Gillette? Now, that is in right. regards to dating the that's razor. Right. That's my interesting idea. Oh, it? wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Gillette was the king of razors and they occupied most what? of all the market share. They did. Well, yeah, but it was his name. Come on, cut it out. But uh, as Gillette was, as it was dominating the razor world, the other makers out there were kind of following in suit. So like, Don't know what that's like. even as early as this, um, you know, this, this is probably from the early 1900s. It looks exactly like a Gillette uh, single ring or double ring case. I mean, almost identically leather bound, same kind of clasp as a double ring. Or so Gillette borrowed from them is what you're saying? No, this, well, this particular one is actually uh, the gem. So that's actually going to be after 1906. So this, the double edge would already be on the scene. Okay, yeah. But um, you can see parallels all over the place. You know, like this, this style case right here looks a lot like a 1930s case from Gillette. Uh, that as well, that looks like a 1930s, 1940s kind of case from Gillette. Your purple one over here looks like a tuck away from 1920s Gillette. Um, so a lot of other razor makers were taking note and copying. Um, I guess that's what happens is people like to copy whoever's the best. Don't look up. Oh. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's kind of the the, the, long, the long and short of, of gem. Now I think we're going to take some of these single edge blades and do with them what they're best for. Happy Halloween! Trick or treat. <laughs> this is not Halloween. Not Halloween. No, but they're razor blades, and that's what you do best them. Is you put them in candy, right? Well, folks, you always hear about razor blades being put in candy. 
eighties, no, eighties. That you, was in the eighties. That was in the eighties. I think it was in the eighties. But you, you always had this vision of swallowing one of these, and that's. Just... I know I do, still. <laughs> so we thought with the uh, with the fall holidays abound and the harvest time of year, we thought it better to face our fear. Yeah. Like staring at yourself naked for a long, long time in a mirror in traffic during rush hour. You gotta face down your fears. So what we're gonna do is embrace this whole sticking a razor blade and candy thing and throw one at a pumpkin. Throw one at a pumpkin. Throw because a pumpkin. why the f not? <laughs> oh, oh, you need to move. <laughs> one down. Oh! <laughs> okay. Ooh, that was good. Damn it. Uh, now what's your, what's your secret here? Damn it. Just I can't tell you. <laughs> oh. You one got, out of five. You got you got a lot of headroom here. Not so good. Are you doing blade forward? Yep, blade forward. It's like a tomahawk. <gasps> hey! Oh! Na, 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 na. That's my thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I see oh. it, you. You penetrated, but you didn't stick. Story of my life, folks. Story of my life. This is so dangerous. And we should be wearing safety goggles. No, we shouldn't. Punk rock, baby. Oh! oh! Guess I won that one. Doug won with two out of five. I was meant for this. I'm like a natural. This is like tubing for me. I'm really impressed. Well, we did the best thing you could do with a single edge blade. We threw it in some <laughs> Aside from shaving with one. Yeah. So that's that, folks. Thank you so much for joining us once more. And if you'd like to enter this, what are we going to give away this week? you want to give away a clean? Should I give away something? Or? We're going to give away a Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt. Oh, that t-shirt. Can be, what does it look like, Matt? Does it look like this? It looks like this. <laughs> Just kidding. It's he made a the one I always wear for everything. Yeah, you could win Matt's previously worn shirt. That's right. It'll be so one. Com- all you have to do is comment, like, and subscribe below, and you could be a winner. You're a winner. A big winner. In my book. Till next week. I'd rather be shaving.com. <laughs> <laughs>